I'm Jack Burgess. We're at Ardenwood Historic Farm in Fremont, California. I'm a member of uh, SPCRR. The real name is Society for the Preservation of Carter Railroad Resources. And our group is dedicated to acquiring and restoring old wood freight cars and passenger cars, uh, especially those built by Carter Brothers. The city of Newark is right across from us. Uh, there was a car builder in the late 1800s that was centered in Newark and had a, a reputation for building very good economical freight cars. We're here today because this is Labor Day weekend and our group has an annual event uh, on this Labor Day weekend. We run trains, we have a steam engine here, there's all kinds of model railroaders on display, equipment and so forth. Uh, this is a fundraiser for us, it takes a lot of work, we have a lot of volunteers, but it helps pay the bills toward buying redwood, buying the parts we need to restore the equipment we're, we're working on. My name is Richard Murray. I'm uh, the uh, live steam coordinator for our club, which is called the Bay Area Garden Railroad Society. We're here at Arden, uh, Historic Arden Farms in Fremont. Um, we're running uh, trains on our portable track. We have no electricity coming to this uh, track. Uh, invariably, when we have a meet, we'll have maybe 15 guys running trains, everywhere from uh, Shea engines to uh, cab forward to uh, little British engines. We do all this because we enjoy trains, especially live steam. Our larger club is probably about two-thirds electric, and we're about one-third live steam. We burn um, fuel off Dunn's butane, creates a fire, uh, the fire boils the water, we collect the uh, steam from the, uh, the engine and that we feed that steam to the piston, which then powers the engine. Um, it is a mechanical operation. Live steam engines need quite a bit of repair. Many of our guys are engineers one way or the other. Uh, it does take some expertise to learn how to run the engines and also to maintain them. We've been coming to uh, Ardenwood here for probably 10, 15 years, ever since it, uh, I believe, first started. We enjoy the atmosphere, we enjoy the farms, we enjoy the people. Um, it's just a very neat, historic place to be. And we're very grateful that we get invited back each year. Hello, I'm Pat Latouris from the Bay Area Garden Railway Society. And we're here at Ardenwood Historic Farm and Park to enjoy their annual rail fair. This event is very, very special to those of us in the model railroad hobby and in the railroad historical hobby because Ardenwood has a great reputation for restoring vintage narrow gauge equipment. If you look behind me, you can see some South Pacific Coast equipment. They have restored from looking like garbage to a very beautiful piece of equipment. They have a full engine shop on other parts of the property. They Every year at this event they run steam and diesel powered equipment and they have the park itself which has all of their facilities and activities including the tour of the Patterson House and the animals, the food making operations, the farming operations. This is a working farm and they routinely sell live produce. If you get off at the park entrance there's a store that sells all sorts of organic vegetables, so you can stock your pantry with this stuff. But basically it's a worthwhile investment of your time and your energies. Hopefully the trains behind me won't be making too much noise, but I invite you to come down to Ardenwood at any point in time, not just over the Labor Day for their rail fare. Thank you very much. Hi, my name's Andy Carey. I'm a volunteer at the SPCRR here at the Railroad Museum in Ardenwood in Fremont, California. I'd like to talk a little bit about the collection we have on hand right now. If you look over my shoulder, you're looking at a kind of an orange car. That's the Arcata and Mad River Smoker. It's built in the late 1880s. We don't know exactly who built it. We're still researching it. But it has an interesting history. It ran on a railroad up in uh, the area around Eureka 
up to some mills that was also a general passenger hauler. This car is unique because it started out as a passenger car for smokers. It eventually became a caboose and was placed onto steel and wood flat car bodies uh, by the Arcadia Mad River once it's standard gauged. The car belonged to Henry Sorensen for a number of years. Uh, he ran it uh, on his little road and it was given to the state of California and we acquired it from them. The next car, barely visible in front of it, is a replica of a Centerville branch a wood trucked flat car. Uh, this car has no bearings except for oak on steel. Uh, we drip a little oil in there to keep it from catching fire. And it is replica of, uh, it's a replica of a car that ran from uh, Newark, California to Centerville, California. Centerville is now part of Fremont. Uh, about four miles on dead flat land. And its, it's unique thing was never pulled by anything but horses. The car in front of that is an Oakland Street car. Uh, again, we're pretty sure it was built in 1881. Uh, this car uh, is originally a horse car. It was at some point attached to a steam dummy. Uh, it ran on uh, different streets in Oakland and is in actually amazingly good shape considering its age. Uh, it is uh, currently on uh, a temporary truck so we can haul it around and we're waiting for money to build the castings for the new uh, wheel sets. The car immediately behind that is a Carter boxcar. Uh, built in the early 1880s. Uh, it's one of a set of three we have here. This one's been restored as it was in about 1889 uh, after it had been transferred to the Southern Pacific. The car has the Herald on it. Originally it was developed for the South Pacific Coast that was later adopted by the SP and is a 10-ton car. Uh, currently it's our museum car. We have exhibits in there and it was repainted about three years ago and we have a temporary roof on it, protected from the elements. On my left side are two pump cars and a harp stand switch. Uh, the harp stand switch is something which is our standard switch on the SPCR here at the Railroad Museum. It's a stub switch. That's a switch where the rail is actually bent from side to side. Right behind that harp stand are two pump cars. The one in closest to us is a replica of a 1877 era pump car. It weighs about 200 pounds uh, and is a relatively quick car and light. Right behind that is a restored 1906 Buddha hand car. It weighs 500 pounds, is geared much higher, it goes faster, but it's much, much harder to pump. Correspondingly, we seldom use it. Hi, I'm Lynn Gerber and I'm a member of the Bay Area Garden Railway Society. I'm actually, in fact, their membership chairman. The Bay Area Garden Railway Society is made up of different regional sections and so most of us have garden railways in our backyards. Some people have them in their front yards and this display actually folds up all sides and we can haul it down the freeway and we go to things like the Berkeley Book Fest or the Sonoma Children's Museum or here at Ardenwood. Everything on it is living. Those are bonsai trees. They've been in there for 10 years. This tells the story of the Boxcar Kids, which was written by a woman in the 30s and 40s and then later on other writers took up her story and carried it into the 50s. We have a scavenger hunt that you can do around the whole display here. Um, but again, it's mostly to show you what you could do in your own backyard or front yard with plants. And that's a simple oval layout. And uh, the G scale that you see running there, you know, you can get very inexpensively. Hi, I'm Kenny Paul. This is the Paul Family Lego Train. Uh, we've been doing this for about uh, 15 or so years. Uh, every season between Christmas and New Year's, I set up a, about a 150 square foot display in my garage and uh, it's been open to the public. This is the first year we've been invited to participate in the rail fair. Super excited about that. What we have here uh, is a Lego Railroad. 100% um, of the parts and everything that you see is all from Lego at one time or another. Uh, the trains that are running are all scratch built. The buildings are all scratch built, so nothing's from a kit. We've got a, a GP9 pulling uh, this freight train. Uh, as I said, all the rolling stock is uh, scratch built. Uh, we have the little steam train 
Uh, it's actually being pushed by the tender. I have two, two motors there that are pushing it along. Uh, we also have a trolley car uh, that I can send out and go around, a little red trolley car. Uh, it's always been a big hit with folks. Very proud to have been invited to participate in the rail fair. Really nice seeing all, how much people are enjoying this. Uh, just walking around, being able to see all of the great model railroads that are on display, being able to ride the trains here at Ardenwood. So uh, it's really been a, a great time, a great experience, and uh, very appreciative. So, Hi, my name's Eric Child. I'm from Santa Cruz, California. I'm here at Ardenwood today. Uh, I come almost every year to the rail fair, sometimes other times. I really am into railroads, and in particular, I love the South Pacific Coast. And here at Ardenwood, they've done a great job of trying to continue to document the South Pacific Coast Railway, to document how it affected uh, the East Bay here. And of course, the, the railroad ran all the way into uh, Santa Cruz at one time. They've also done a great job in documenting and restoring some of the work of Carter Brothers. Carter Brothers was a manufacturer of railroad cars that was here in the East Bay. And they furnished uh, some of the street cars that ran in San Francisco. They also furnished a lot of the rolling stock that ran on the South Pacific Coast Railroad. So this is an incredible place. It's a working farm. It's a working railroad. Uh, they've got live steam. Until recently, they actually had horse-drawn trains, horse-drawn cars. What can I say? Great place to be. I love coming out and seeing everything that's here. There's model railroad societies that display here. Uh, a friend of mine is here with his calliope. He's been here most years with calliopes. You don't often get to see those. So, come on down anytime. So my name is John Haskey and I am from Bonnie Dune, California and I've been participating in rail fare for probably 10 years now, bringing the calliope originally and now more recently the calliope and the calliola and I enjoy coming out to rail fare mostly to see the people's reactions to the instrument. Um, you'll see people walking down the walk here just kind of bouncing along in time to the music and you know you've done something to kind of make their day a little bit happier. So the calliope was originally invented or patented, let's say, in 1855. And it was a man by the name of Joshua Stoddard who did a steam-powered calliope and it was first placed on a riverboat. And the riverboats used to have calliopes basically to attract attention so you'd know when the riverboat was coming into town. After that, the circuses kind of caught on and then steam calliopes became very common in circuses. And usually when the circus parade came into town, the last wagon would have a steam-powered calliope. And steam power is a little bit tricky and can have some problem of its own. Um, steam calliopes are very hard to keep in tune. So along those lines, right after 1900, someone invented a pneumatic or air-powered calliope. And that's what this is a descendant of. So the air-powered calliope originally was basically a copy of the steam calliope, but then it was evolved. And by the 20s, you had an instrument very much like this the same arrangement with the whistles and tears, and then it's pneumatically operated, pressure to blow the pipes, and then vacuum to actually operate the mechanism. This calliope can be either played from the keyboard, it can also be played from a perforated roll similar to a player piano, and then for convenience sake, this one has been converted to use a computer interface, MIDI, that also basically duplicates what the paper roll does. And this particular instrument is a copy of a national calliope, Yep, this one was built in the 1980s. The national calliopes were from the 20s and 30s. So this instrument is a replica of an instrument originally made by the Wurlitzer Company. And Wurlitzer was most famous for band organs and carousel organs, things you'd see on merry-go-rounds and things like that. But they made this instrument to counter the production of the calliope over here. They called this a calliola, and it appeared in several different forms. They had ones that were just the pipes and no drums on the side. They had others that had metal whistles just like these. Some of the whistles were from the bottom, others they hang down. But anyway, there are very, a lot of different variations on this particular instrument. This one plays solely from a paper roll. 
The original Wurlitzer instruments actually had a keyboard on the back that you could play manually, but this one does not have that feature. So originally at Rail Fair, I only brought the Calliope along, and then some years ago we acquired this instrument. It was incredibly rough when we got it. It's still fairly rough, but playable, and it's, it's okay for this event. Most people don't know the difference, but we're still in the process of getting it tuned up just to spec. And like I mentioned earlier, it is playing from a paper roll, and we have plans to convert it to the same computer interface that this one uses so we can easily alternate. Hi, my name is Phil Edholm, and welcome to the California Central Coast ON30 Modular Railroad. Uh, the California Central Coast is a group of modular railroads from here in Northern California. Um, we have members from Concord um, all the way down to South San Jose. So we do this because it's a great opportunity to model in a really great scale. ON30 is quarter inch scale, so it's 1 48th. It's double the size of the HO most of people are familiar with, which lets us have a level of detail that is really pretty phenomenal. Uh, being modular, we get to set up at a lot of events that really lets us engage the public and, and interact on how model railroading is really a great hobby and a great opportunity. And plus, it's a super social event for those of us that are part of the club and part of the group. So enjoy the layout today, and we look forward to seeing you at an event here in Northern California in the future. Thanks. Hi, my name is Terry Hurley, and I'm a member of the Diablo Pacific Short Line, and we display and we set up and display our trains at many train shows as far away as we can go which usually uh, if you can make it in a day's drive maybe as far as Sacramento we'll do it uh, we set up at uh, uh, birthday parties we set up at uh, other uh, family events and um, we set up here at this show right here this is one of our favorites this is a four day long event for us and we've been here since Friday night. I do this because I like to fix things, repair things, and make things. And I've liked to do that all my life. If you're a person who likes that sort of thing, uh, railroading is for you. Uh, they have many scales of railroading, and as you get older, bigger is better because you can't see the little details is good on that tiny stuff. But on the big stuff, you can, and that's why I like it best. I've been in this organization for at least 10 years. But I'm, I'm a newbie compared to some of them. But we encourage people to come and join, bring your children. It's a family type event. Uh, it's um, uh, user friendly for families. If you would like to learn more about us, go to shortline.org. And we have a website there. And you'll see many movies. Some of our movies were made on moving trains. Our trains moving. One thing I failed to mention is the Society for the Preservation of Carter Railroad Resources spells S-P-C-R-R. -R. And our prototype for operation is the South Pacific Coast Railroad, which ran right through this park back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So I hope you enjoyed your visit today. If you're in the Bay Area or coming into the Bay Area, uh, plan on coming by. Thanks.